So uh, now I want to introduce our next uh, speaker, Von Labras from France, uh, going to be telling us about how they're using Hub Zero in the life sciences area. So welcome. Thank you, Michael. I like your shirt. Hi, hi everyone. I just want to begin by thanks Michael and uh, the Hub Zero Foundation to invite me to see this Hub conference. Uh, second, I will apologize for my approximate English, and I hope that you will understand what I'm trying to say. And um, so I hesitate for a long time between making a demonstration or showing big shape or insight or things like that. Finally, there is no demonstration, but you have some video on uh, YouTube, and there is some links on it if you want to see after. And if you want, if you want some live de demo, you can see me after and I can show you uh, things today or tomorrow because I'm here tomorrow. So I will speak about e-science, an e-science project in Western France and uh, yeah, using a bottom-up approach and open source uh, tools. So I will begin by the context. So first uh, I check, uh, I take this picture yesterday and it's quite interesting because they are related to the first part of the context. It's uh, dedicated to the increasing diversity in demand, computational resources, and growing demand, and the force providing. And it's exactly what we see in life sciences. Uh, especially here, you can see uh, the, the evolution of computing and storage uh, capacities. And in blue, uh, the blue line represents the evolution of data production in uh, related to next generation sequencing. When we present this kind of uh, graph, a lot of people say, okay, I have to have, uh, in my lab, in each lab, we have to have a, a data center with a lot of uh, uh, people working with a computer. And in fact, we are thinking that it's exactly the inverse. It's, we, we have to say, when, when we see this, we have to, to think about the fact that we, we don't need, we, don't, uh, we can't continue to uh, just buy a storage in computing things, we have to think more about the fact that we have to, to change our uh, manner to use this infrastructure things. Uh, now we, we are in the first, uh, the first way, this data nanny is uh, related to next generation sequencing technology uh, advanced. Uh, there is also proteomics, where we have a lot of data. And we begin to see a large amount of data coming from bioimaging, for example. In Western, in Western France, we have a core facility who can produce 30 terabytes of data per day. And it's something quite huge for a community like in life sciences, where we don't, have, uh, we don't uh, use a large amount of data uh, in the past. Uh, regarding digital data, so we, we, it's really a change in life sciences. We go totally with, uh, throughout the digital age, and we see that we have a new, really increase in the amount of data, but also in the heterogeneity of the data. And this is a critical situation for a lot of uh, laboratories. The second uh, part of the context is this one. Uh, we see in the economist in 2020, uh, that uh, there is, uh, there is uh, an evolution where we need to have uh, more and more analysis skills. And at the same time, we see that it's really difficult now to, to see people who have analysis skills. And it's, it's, this is something really important, and uh, there is a danger to, to, in this evolution. So we have to face it by facilitating data analysis through skill transfer by training, for example, or promoting uh, the use of usable, more usable tools for uh, increased accessibility. Uh, you have, we have to promote peer review, reanalyze this and portability, uh, notably uh, for, uh, to go to a more reproducibility. And uh, we have to consider really the important, the importance, the importance sorry, of public fundings and the relation between citizen and society to, to go for to go towards more transparency. And the last part of the context is this one. It's a picture of uh, just uh, uh, 
my desk where I live is a dolphin, and uh, because I'm a marine biologist originally. And uh, there is also a quote from Albert Einstein who says, most of the fundamental ideas of science are essentially uh, simple and may as a rule be expressed and uh, as a, in a language comprehensible to everyone. This is something really important. We see every day that between scientific domains, we have problem to exchange and to understand the other. And we see the same things between ICT people and uh, the, scientific, the different uh, scientific domains. So we are thinking, uh, three years ago now, we, we, we are thinking that ESI and support can be a solution to address these problems. So uh, what is science? Really briefly, we can just say that it's used to use a full ICT programming research. And what, what we see that it's um, in, uh, in Europe, but uh, in, uh, all over the world, uh, e-science uh, approach was, were, were used based on infrastructure and really strong related to infrastructure, big infrastructure uh, in international uh, uh, situation. So this is a classical top-down vision. But it's not only infrastructure, and this is also human resources, and this is tools to use infrastructures. And for us, it's really uh, something important. And we, three years ago, we were saying, OK, in fact, infrastructure doesn't matter, because if you want computing or storage, you can buy it uh, to Amazon or something like that. You don't have uh, specific needs or specific uh, skills to, to do this. But the really important things are the tools we you are using and the people you have uh, to use these tools. So we, we are developing uh, a new approach, uh, a bottom-up approach with our communities, uh, with almost no infrastructure. For example, I, say, I see uh, yesterday the Cubes project was uh, speaking about uh, near three million uh, dollars uh, for the project. And we, for three years, we have had only $150,000. It's me, in fact. <laughs> so the Indian West project uh, is just to locate the Western France. And we have uh, some pins uh, presenting the big center where we have a lot of uh, core facility, because Indian West comes from the Indian West network, who is a, a gathering of 40 core facilities in genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and uh, other things around life sciences, biotechnology. So we begin uh, in 2012 for three years with funding from the two regions of Western France. And uh, we make, in fact, we have a, a two, two goals in this project. It was to first test an e-science approach based on the use of tools on virtual research environment and prepare for maybe uh, uh, the structuration of Western France. And it was quite a, a success, because in fact, we, we trained a lot of scientists, a lot, depending on the, on the, uh, the size of the possible community, but it's quite a lot. Uh, we have uh, some uh, 200 user, users of our data research environment, uh, write sell an article, and we present really an innovative uh, virtual research environment concept. We integrate a lot of different projects, regional, national, or international projects related to IT, health, agro, or uh, environment. So the, the, the main fact uh, of this project was to use a virtual research environment uh, based on the system of systems approach using research life cycle and open source solution. So really briefly, uh, virtual research environment is uh, the, the fact uh, that we propose to a user, a scientist, to have access to data, softwares, and processing resources, uh, storage, computing, uh, through a web portal. And these are two goals. The first goal is to, uh, to enhance collaboration in the scientific world and to answer the questions of communities. So for this, we we begin to we begin to uh, analyze the open source solution, the existing open source solution in academic um, uh, landscape, uh, and we we were based on uh, something quite agnostic in the research in the research life cycle. So 
in research. We, we have an ID research partner. We have to write a proposal, and then we begin to produce data by simulation, experimentation, or observation, and then we manage the data. And finally, we want to valorize the data through uh, publication. I think you were me. And one important thing for us was to talk to you and to build and just capitalize on what other academic teams uh, are making the working programs. Something interesting uh, in the presentation uh, yesterday was also the fact that uh, we see uh, Michael speaking about Google. So when we see that, uh, we can, because anytime I present our VRE uh, approach, my service company, they say, oh, you want to kill uh, the company because you, you want to promote open source approach and not developing new tools for a film. And in fact, it's not really the case. What we are saying is we want to have uh, the possibility to touch the car and really uh, see uh, what happens uh, on our tools. But if we, if we build a uh, VRB with specific uh, gate, Proposing uh, to other uh, to other services to exchange is our VR. In fact, it's an incredible opportunity for our company to propose uh, additional services and not to this company don't have to wait that scientists ask for uh, special modules or special functionality because the uh, company know what they can propose and they they can be. Uh, they can uh, develop new new functionality and say, okay, we have developed something. Thank you. We have developed something, and you we can propose uh, you to 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 add this functionality to your VRD. The other things really interesting is uh, uh, the currents we see uh, at the bottom, and uh, the fact that it's important to be at the left. Uh, and it's really important, it's related to the use of academic uh, development and using our approach of only capitalize on the use of existing tools developing by academic team uh, allow us to, to be always on the left of this uh, graph. So we, make a, uh, we create a continuum using uh, three main bricks uh, was uh, App Zero for scientific collaboration uh, the M environment based on ISA tools for data management and Galaxy for data, ana data analysis. Uh, so we make a continuum from data management to data analysis and uh, in a collaborative environment. So the first part concerns the first big functionality concerns the data management. And for this, in fact, we it's really interesting because this uh, this uh, picture we see yesterday was something that uh, the, develop, the team who developed ISA uh, uh, tools uh, keep as an example because they don't want to develop a new tool uh, using a new standard but they want to make um, a gate to our existing standard to facilitate the, um, the, the use of uh, uh, metadata the use of metadata and environment and uh, and the sorry the translation between one standard to another standard is something really uh, new and clever. Uh, other thing is uh, in this uh, ISA tools it's like to, that user can directly uh, uh, can directly be connected to biomedical ontologies and select ontologies to avoid any problem of uh, the cross problem of uh, uh, the same things described by, by uh, not the same exactly uh, character chains. Uh, and now it's quite interesting because ISA tools begin to be uh, publication submission format itself. And I don't know if you if you know the the Giga Science journal. But Giga Science is one of the first journal uh, proposing to use uh, ISA tools as a metadata uh, publication submission uh, and propose to to execute the data on the paper. In fact, so additional tools are 
video to upload data, but I don't uh, have to speak about uh, this. And uh, related to ISA tools, we have a biological, biological investigation repository. Another thing is concerning data analysis. So yesterday we see this. And it's quite interesting because this is what the user wants, if I don't make a mistake. And what user wants when we speak about data analysis is quite to be uh, something like Tom Cruise. And what we propose in uh, Corpus AT or in uh, IT is, okay, uh, learn Linux and uh, uh, learn command line the tools. Uh, learn to use a scheduling system like SGE and after we will see. Another thing is concerning the tools, we see that there is a lot of tools in life sciences. Uh, particularly, we, we are really using different environments and different tools to uh, just analyze this, uh, just to analyze uh, one uh, raw data. And uh, people want uh, to have access to these different tools, but with a graphical user interface, and uh, they want to work full and things like that. And to propose a framework we can use all of these things, we are using in fact Galaxy, because Galaxy is quite the same like uh, Rapture, in fact, if I can say this, uh, and propose to integrate tools right in R, in Python, uh, MATLAB, or other things uh, in a framework. Uh, what is quite interesting is it gives the possibility to save all the histories you have had from raw data to process data, and you can uh, directly extract each history in a workflow and exchange, uh, share uh, all the galaxy objects, so data set, histories, workflow, and tools. Uh, yeah, so for that analysis. And to help uh, analyze data, we also uh, develop uh, a cloud system, a private cloud system based on Open Nebula, where people just can click have a Galaxy instance of, or, a, or an Up Zero instance and make some tests and try it. It's interesting for, for users. And finally, uh, mainly the Up Zero system, Up Zero platform, uh, with for us a gate to our, our VRD, in fact, uh, for uh, dedicated to collaboration. So we are using uh, up zero uh, through the app go up. Uh, so we don't have a lot of users, but it's important to say that uh, as it's in a bottom up approach, we don't want to, to make a lot of advertisement and say use it. We want to have users who are really using our tools and giving feedback. Uh, so here are the information. And we just switched to another app because now. We have finished the testing phase of three years, and we, we uh, have had funding from National Institute in uh, uh, Informatics, in fact, Computing and Algorithmic, and uh, for four years to build the first e science uh, center in France based on our uh, virtual research environment. So we just begin to, to, to set up a new hub, uh, one we want the version. Uh, and uh, it's quite interesting because we have 17,000 uh, researchers in Western France, not only in life science, and we want to, to try to, to really gather all these different uh, scientific domains together around hub, one hub, and or maybe several hubs. So what are our goals? So for societies, in the things we want to do is to promote open science and open data, and for end user, Scientist community, we want to propose data management plan. Now we can automatically propose a first draft of data management plan that people can explain what they are making with the, the data. We want to uh, promote the fact that uh, we preserve, access, share, and visualize data that also analyzes processes. And uh, it's uh, a net for project management. For ICD, one important thing is to facilitate the use of tools to accelerate uh, the switch between research and service and to switch between development to production state and mainly optimize infrastructure use. When we speak about optimization, what we see a study made me feel about this because just for example, the first use of App Zero was to centralize the data and stop to have different versions of uh, 
uh, document in each uh, computer of uh, a team, and it's a first part of the optimization uh, spirit. And finally, the important thing is also we want to stop to think about building infrastructure for our data, but we want to build infrastructure of data. So ERE for us is a really a starting block and uh, where we can manage, that, manage data through using metadata management or development, uh, URI and uh, life sciences protocols. We want to promote reproducibility using cloud technology, uh, combining <coughs> galaxy containers, uh, virtualization like Docker and versioning like Git, accessibility uh, through uh, publishing public resources like wikis, analyzing processes, experiments, or publications, and go to to wrap linked data, uh, building in fact end, semantic web end for endpoints uh, for each VRE and connecting each VRE uh, one to another and to the uh, on the, to the semantic web uh, environment. And uh, an interesting thing also we are investigating is uh, yesterday we speak about the fact that uh, in uh, Amazon Web Services uh, there is an estimated SIA computing time of uh, 264 years if I, wonder, if I don't make a mistake. And just a question, if I speak about 6 million years, I didn't know if you have an idea where we can have 6 million years of analyzing this capacity. Of the in games, in fact. And in, in, in games, not only in games, I invite you to, to see this beautiful presentation uh, uh, concerning gaming can make a better world. Uh, when I speak about games, I speak about cities and sites. In fact. There is really an, a, a big, a huge possibility in cities and science, and now we don't, researchers don't use really this, uh, this approach. And in the eScience Center, we really want to promote this kind of new method to make science. Uh, so, practically, we develop a new tools. It's a web platform with smartphone app to uh, facilitate for scientists the creation of a citizen science project. But one other interesting thing is the collaboration with a Swiss startup called MMOS for massively multi online science with a startup who proposed to plug the data into uh, well famous existing uh, the games, in fact. So it's a joint adventure, so I want to thank Galaxy Team, IS18, and just to show that my title was really close to the title of the reference paper of Galaxy, because with the Galaxy Team we, we really are in the, the same scope to openness. And I want to thank Staff Zero Team, so I didn't find any picture of uh, all the uh, every people, so I make some names with uh, uh, people uh, with whom uh, I have uh, had uh, some tickets, uh, contacts, uh, shoot. And uh, for the other team, it's, we, we really have a lot of contact and we develop some components for Galaxy and for ISA, but for now we didn't make any uh, developmental effort for App Zero. And I think we have maybe uh, times now to, to make this and to go further with the uh, App Zero team. And finally, I want to thank Ishvar. <laughs> I don't know really is, uh, if uh, I don't I make a mistake or not, but one thing interesting, if, I, if we make this to, 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 to make a proof that we can, uh, we can use this approach and without putting a lot of money in infrastructure, we can do something interesting, capitalize uh, with uh, existing tools. And uh, a lot of people are seeing that we, we can think that we are taking things in this thing and uh, there is no go back, in fact, but when you see, for example, Ishvar, uh, one year ago, a little bit more, contact uh, us to have information about the combining of these three uh, tools, and now we can see that maybe there is a go back to, to the NSF and to the work that you can make uh, here in the, in the in USA. So thanks for our attention, you have uh, here some links well, the different tools and the demonstration if you want uh, at the end uh, of uh, the presentation and you can find the presentation of course on the CESBO hub if you search
search for sales go up in Google, it's the first one, and you're searching the, the resources, it's the uh, last resources. Thank you very much.